It is time now for our first round table of the month of April. And as you can see, we're joined by Democratic political analyst Marianne Marsh, Republican political analyst Jenny Pecky. It's great to have you with us to kick off the month of April, guys. Great All to right. see you. Good to be here. We're, we're live. Gonna, we are going to start with former President Donald Trump. An arraignment expected in Manhattan on Tuesday. Very high stakes here. What do you see happening with this, Marianne? Well, the good news is this is finally the restoration of the, law, of the rule of law and our democracy. Just by this process. Whatever happens after this, this is how we begin it. And we have to go through it. But I think people are mistaken to say we're in uncharted territory, unprecedented times. No, we're not. Politicians across this country and the state have been adjudicated and, and you know, indicted, convicted. James Michael Curley, mayor of Boston, was incarcerated when he was mayor. Spiro Agnew, but not a vice, president, a former Spiro president. Spiro Agnew's vice president was indicted, convicted bribery, all of that. And Richard Nixon resigned because he was feared he would be indicted, tried and convicted. So we're not, this is not unusual. Donald Trump's being treated like a citizen. He is. He's being treated like a candidate that he is. And even if he, the indictment goes through, he is convicted and incarcerated and he gets elected president, he can still be president. Jenny, what do you think? I mean, I try to think about this, like how does a regular person who's not a political commentator think about it? Mm -hmm. And I think that they're disturbed. I think they're sad. I think they're concerned about this particular charge, which is basically about hush money paying um, to cover up sex. And I think that it's a tough one to start with. If the guy did something bad on January 6th that can be proven in court, I think that's a totally different or, thing. Or in the Georgia or in the Georgia election Georgia case. case or in the documents, for example, with Marla. Right. right. And what I think is right. the Democrats really want to run against Donald Trump because they know they can beat him. And they think the drip, drip, drip of you know keeping him in the spotlight so no other candidate can emerge is to their benefit. Mm -hmm. And they might overplay their Ma hands. Marianne, you mentioned the, you know, the, yeah. the mechanism. I mean, it, it, just to see a former president uh, booked, mugshot, fingerprinted. He's not going to be handcuffed, but but it, it, and and you even use the word incarcerated. I mean, could Donald Trump sit in a jail with the Secret Service right next to him, armed? We don't know any of this. We don't know what the charges are. Let's see what happens on Tuesday. But. Donald Trump brought this on himself, number one. Number two, he has more serious charges to come that are much more clear. So if you're trying to play politics with it, should it come this order, this order, that's politics. Don't play politics, call balls and strikes. But Donald Trump is finally being treated like everyone else after he's been able to put it off for years. Don't play politics then, don't have a democratically elected um, district attorney in New York City bring the charges. That the, is political on its face. What, you're, gonna the, go, the, you're supposed Department to go shop for a DA? The Department of Justice declined to pursue under case. Trump, under Trump, under Trump, under Trump. I'm waiting. I, 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 it's good. It's good tennis going on. Here. All right. And, uh, obviously, that item is is going to play out. And you know, it right now it appears it's going to happen Tuesday afternoon. But who knows between now and then? Our other big story this morning we we talked about on OTR is the auditor Diana DeZoglio. So, Ginny, let me start with you. What what are your takeaways from the conversation we had with the auditor? Well, there's two S's you don't want to be labeled with when you first come into a statewide office. One is being self-serving, and one is being not serious. And I. I think both of those are dangerous for Diana DiZaglio. She comes across as someone trying to settle old scores, and I don't think it's going to work. Marianne? Yeah, I think Diana DiZaglio would be better off if she said exactly what her audit is. Is it NDAs? Is it office space? Is it, what is it, number one? And number two, she came in here with a stack of folders right. um, when she interviewed with you guys, and she should release those and put them online and let people read what those audits were and who did them. If she's pointing to this as precedent, mm -hmm. then people in Massachusetts should be able to see it. But I think Diana DiZoglio right now is sort of, it, it's a bit of a fishing expedition, and I think the more specific she is about what she's gonna do, what what the audit is, she says she started it, what does that mean, right. what is your scope, how are you going about it, the better. Right. Mm -hmm. You think it's politically motivated? She campaigned on it, she said she would do it. I simply, I, I just think like any other audit that office does and has done in the past, they tell you what it is, they tell you how they did it, they tell you what the target is, then they issue their report. She should show those mm -hmm. reports and what she's doing. All right. All right, Governor Healy has found her new MBTA general manager. We've talked a lot about that here. He is Phil Ng, who has 40 years of rail experience, including as head of the Long Island Railroad. His pay package, we're talking in the neighborhood of about a half a million dollars, and there will be bonuses. Now, I want to start with you, Jenny. Do you think he can turn this thing around where so many others have not been able to? Well, first of all, I think he's being underpaid <laughs> because this is a, a huge job, and who would want it? I give 
great credit to Governor Healy for finding someone so talented and willing to do it. He needs some quick wins. I think he'll find them. I think he can go right in using his experience to uh, make service a little more uh, reliable to get rid of those slow zones where it's necessary. Mm -hmm. Pick some you know, easy, quick wins, restore a little confidence. I think he's going to do, do you, a good job. Do you think the quick wins are, are available or, or seeable, visible? You know, a lot of this is communication. Right. I think that, that we right. all know that as communications professionals, right. Right. and I think mm -hmm. he knows that too. Marianne, yeah. what do you think? Well, the most appealing part of his record was the fact that on the Long Island Railroad, he was able to make it run on time. That would be a miracle here, okay? <laughs> so he's worth every penny and then some if he gets that done. Improve the safety, improve the you know customer experience, all that stuff. But if it just runs on time and it doesn't go on fire and people don't drive you know dive into the Mystic River, he wins. <laughs> and winter's over, so I'm, no more big snowstorms, yeah. hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, April, we got three April. feet you know on April first. Yeah. 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 We didn't yesterday though.